the girl in her skirt. She walks around the neighborhood with a skirt thigh high, sipping her soda and holding a cigarette in the other hand. She had to be in her late teens, early 20s, knowing well enough what she was doing, attracting the attention from the boys who sat upon the stoops and fences. They would catcall and whistle as she pretended not to hear them, continuing to put on her show. They would sit and wait for the wind to blow, hoping to get a glance of what she has. Of course, it took less than a gust of wind to see what she has to offer. At least that's what her daddy says. And nobody could predict the wind. But in passing time, I would sit there among the rest, sipping on a cold beer, waiting on that wind, because I had nothing else. Thank you. It's a little story I wrote, um, and it's entitled, Some Thoughts on My Religious Experience, and it's kind of written in my childhood voice. I grew up in the congregational faith. We attended church at one of a few Gothic wannabes in Newton called the Second Church in Newton. I associate the trip to church with car sickness as my sister, brother, and I would read from the funnies on the way in the car. Some Christians prepare to worship Christ by doing penance, going to confession and uttering Hail Marys. My preparation was dizziness and peanuts or little orphan Annie on the way to church. Our church was full of strange people with strange voices. It was also full of stained glass windows and wooden pews with red seat cushions. The congregation was oddly segregated, separated by wooden partitions around each pew. You could still see the faces and shoulders of your neighbor, though. There were books in the pews, old tattered hymnals full of old tattered hymns, the words of which, when sung, would slur together. I didn't catch their meaning. What were we singing anyway? Our church was full of strange adults with their strange rituals. The adults need the things of this place. It is full of their things and rituals. The order of service always seemed to descend on each moment spent in church like great stones falling to the ground. I would expect some of them to land in a tumble of seriously injured worshipers, yet somehow they landed upright, their placement being intentional after all. One of the stones was called the doxology. All would suddenly rise from cues known to all but myself. My grandmother sang this and all else in church righteously, her voice sounding forced and proper. <clears throat> Even the hymnals stood at attention. Let nothing dare droop or be slovenly. My grandmother expressed a controlled spirituality, as though she were playing a game that had very clear rules. She saw God in nature and followed the teachings of Jesus, at, well, at least when helping those she liked. She was a product of her time. She helped many, but avoided people of color and those from different cultures. The stained glass windows of our church contained images of stern people, inaccessible and imprisoned forever in glass and holiness. They seemed lonely and untouchable, no longer human, no longer real. We're supposed to believe in them, but they're unattainable. Even the color is too vivid. No one's robe is ever that red or blue or green unless on the stage, a performance given then gone forever. Yet here in the windows, all the moments and people in them are preserved and arranged for all to see. They were captured and imprisoned, but the colors were beautiful and sharp. The faces of those depicted were often sad or stern, as if they too knew they were imprisoned and were weary or in denial. The very letting of the windows holding them in place, keeping them in check in the manner of their theology or dogma. Our minister was the Reverend Cannon, whose name implied detonation to me. I half expected loud battlefield sounds from the War of 1812. He never did detonate, though. He just <laughs> delivered his sermon, and some fought exhaustion. Others were inspired. I went to Sunday school. Patent leather shoes have no traction. I found this out because we used to run everywhere during Sunday school. 
For some reason, we would switch classrooms and wouldn't walk but run to the new room down narrow hallways with waxed wooden floors, kids in front of me, kids behind me, all panicked and running, giddy with the unspoken knowledge that the hapless Sunday school teacher couldn't control her class. <laughs> it was as though mere walking would end the spell of helplessness as the teacher the teacher was under, so we had to, keep, to run to keep it going. The Church of the Nazarene, a church I attended for a while, not just the one I went to either, oh, sorry. The Church of the Nazarene, a church I had attended for a while, has comfy chairs, not just the one I went to either. I saw them at another Church of the Nazarene, too. Strict dogma, comfy chairs. Like seats on a bus, a celestial bus carrying us to a greater understanding of Christ. Just like on airplanes, the seats in front of you have books. And also like airplanes, the literature is consistent. On the plane, it's the airline's magazine full of glossy ads. At our church, it's the Bible and a hymnal. The hymnals still look new, like new recruits, because we always sing from words printed in the order of service or projected on a screen by the uh, data video projector instead. But the Bibles are worn and dog-eared. They have become individuals like battle-weary veterans. The product of a Sunday school project rests on the dashboard of my car. It is an angel. It travels in my car with me, adhering to the same laws of physics that bind me. Therefore, I can never drive faster than it can fly. I guess it is not for spiritual reasons so much as for superstitious ones that it is in my car. It is comforting, though, in its familiarity. Robert Wheeler is wearing a t-shirt with a rather complex image of some Gothic cathedral in France. He tugs at his hem and states that he is ready for church. Why enter one when you can be seen in one? Thank you. Um, this summer I read a book called The Paris Wife by Paula McLean. It's about Ernest Hemingway's and his first wife Hadley's marriage in a fiction, fictionalized version. And um, you know how the story ends, but you wish it wouldn't end that way. So um, that book story inspired my poem, Old Flame Swimming Under the Surface. And it's a little play on words here, as in peace, <clears throat> puzzle piece, and peace and quiet. Last night, my last awake thought that I remember before falling asleep. I have not cried about you in a while, and maybe that's a good thing. The size of the missing piece, peace, varies. Lately, just a few days, a small piece, peace, missing. A piece, peace missing nonetheless. In the nanoseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days, years, time of my real this world life, in my warm early morning shower, this morning you swim in, cool, sunlight, dappled, <clears throat> clear, water, below my real world this life surface. As I try to sunlight, sparkle, blind, ice you out. Fire and ice, ice and fire, old flame. Thank you. This is called um, My Love Was Not a Stranger to My Eyes. My love was not a stranger to my eyes. Though who she is, I did not realize until her sweet voice caught and kept my ear. Then a full woman began to appear who walks this world with such a subtle grace and studies every line upon my face. Not like some angel God sent down to call, but like a woman standing straight and tall. 
Now that I've seen my life from where she stands, this world becomes a place I comprehend. My heart opens to everyone I see. Such is the love my lover brings to me. And when she calls, for call she surely will, there is a crow that lands upon my sill, who speaks with silence, eloquent and wise, of all that he has seen in my love's eyes. Sometimes when I can find no words to say, and with a smile she tells me it's okay. Lord Krishna's flute I hear, it seems to me, and love pours from my heart like melody. Those faithless lovers, washed up on the tide, who cannot see cross to the other side, they ask for proofs and never understand. Love is the truth that withers in their hand. But somewhere out beyond the farthest light, upon the dark and ragged edge of night, there one star shines so soft no one can see. And I know that is where my love will be. Thank you. It's got a lot of strings. So when you think of it, we go from Iraq, back to Babylon, back to Samaria, and I think back to where we think the Garden of Eden may have been. Before the fall, the seed of pride was sown that banished us all in the desert where the tree of life once stood. Those sons of Adam there are up to no good, and I am watching from across the sea. I don't presume to know the way that things should be. It's confusing when you look our way How the things we do are not the same as what we say You know better and we'll teach you how You can be just like us 20 years from now We're down the pathway to the truth we will receive that the cost of war is always more than we believe And the Prince of Peace is broken hearted for the world We've all missed the point and each side needs to win And the sons of men are still at war throughout the world Reaping sorrow in the fields where we've been Across the sea, we the people in the land of the free, east of Eden, where the tree of life once stood. Most sons of Adam there are up to no good, and the Prince of Peace is broken hearted for the world. We've all missed the point, and each side needs to win. The sons of men are still at war throughout the world, reaping sorrow in the fields where we've been. In the desert, where the tree of life once stood, the sons of Adam there are up to.
This song is uh, spawned by what happens often in the songwriting area and the open mic. Somebody says, okay, it's a challenge night. Here's a phrase. Write a song. So the challenge was uh, the last time. And I thought I wasn't going to do it. I don't have time to do this, write these songs, but it came to me anyway. I was young, just 16, wet behind the ears, kind of green. How was I? taking old poems and editing them, but there seemed to be a little bit of a theme of um, history going through, and um, I'm, I have a compilation of poems under a loose heading of Cowboys and Indians, and we usually think of Cowboys and Indians out west. But right here in Massachusetts, there was quite a drama of Cowboys and Indians in the 1600s, the Cowboys being the people from England bringing their cows over, and the use of the land really altered. So who would guess a group of poems on that theme of history? Um, and I have one to share with you today. It's a new poem that I have not read um, that I wanted to share with you. A trading post near a river, today conquered mass. Beaver pelts are exchanged for English merchandise, a manufactured piece of cloth, ammunition, alcohol, and a metal pot. And this exchange transforms everything. The English traders become rich. Native people change habits. Hunting becomes easier with bullets and rifles. Lots more beavers can now be caught. Metal pots replace clay ones. Manufactured cloth replace animal skins. And alcohol, well, that's a very long story. 
All the trades were accompanied by alcohol, and the native low tolerance for alcohol was quickly noted, and this changed everything even more. After 40 years, the beaver population was decimated. And what could be traded now? What was most desired by the English? Land. Owning land? Oh, that was a very foreign concept. Selling land? Unheard of. Sharing land? That had happened forever. That was possible. But trading land for goods, strange new ways had come upon this land. Thank you. When I'm dead and gone, I pass my daughter the baton to keep the legacy strong. If you need a fan, I'm here to cheer you on. If you need guidance, I won't steer you wrong. When I'm dead and gone, I pass my daughter the baton to keep the legacy strong. When you're feeling down, here's a shoulder to cry on, someone to rely on. Have I told you lately that I love you and will put nothing above you? Come to your rescue when there's trouble, whether major or subtle, you're the missing link to the puzzle. So intelligent, take what the world offers by keeping a clear focus, you will surely prosper. You have creativity running through your veins, such enormous talent, yet you still ain't vain. Working on your career, so go do that thing. To be one of the best, you gotta prove that thing. The rest remains. State your claim in this world, progressive woman, no longer a girl. You mean so much to me, I can't express it enough. I understand it takes time to regain your trust. I have one request before I die. Please carry the torch to keep the legacy alive. When I'm dead and gone, I pass my daughter the baton to keep the legacy strong. If you need a fan, I here to cheer you on. If you need guidance, I won't steer you wrong. When I'm dead and gone, I pass my daughter the baton to keep the legacy strong. When you're feeling down, here's a shoulder to cry on, someone to rely on. All right, I want to do one quick small poem. <laughs> <clears throat> Stuck in my shell like caterpillars, can't wait to lie. And has the beauty and break free like that butterfly. That's when I die, so it's time that I fulfill my mission. For comprehension through meditation equals elevation. Caught in the web between good and evil tendencies. In search of the remedy, I think the evil's got the best of me. Materialism floods the world with hate and jealousy. Losing identity completely shrinks moral destiny. Walnut, the lyrical genie, you can't see me, non-visual. Like Nat King Cole, my style's unforgettable. <laughs> Psychodrama resides in minds of the unsure. Constant delusion keeps you in fear cause you're insecure. False insight from stereotype labels me a crook. But the mirror reflects your image, take a look. Shook demise with well defined street poetry. It's all intellect, so my respect is what you're owing me. Thank you. Peace is having a friend when you're scared. Peace is a bat flying in the air on a cold, dark night. Peace is being a frog in Mrs. George's class. Peace is milk chocolate. Peace feels like a pool filled with marshmallows. Peace is riding a horse in the meadow. Peace is the Red Sox. Peace is love, joy, and hope. Peace is doing art. Peace is believing in yourself. Peace is a coat. Peace is your best friend. Peace is a dancing angel. Peace tastes like pizza. Peace is giving things to people who need them. Peace is the USA. Peace is lemonade on a hot day. Peace means swimming in the ocean with my dad. Peace stops anger. Peace is hope. Peace is good for children. Peace is nature that heals you. Peace is a cat and a dog curled up on a basket together. Peace is like Taylor Swift. Peace is giving your mom a hug. Peace is being nice to someone you don't like. Peace is living without worry. Peace feels like Superman saving the day. Peace is growing a garden. Peace is silence. My blankie is peace. Peace feels like a gift. Peace is being who you are. Peace tastes like a butterscotch sundae. Peace is making new friends. Peace is not going to war. Peace is hot cocoa on a cold day. Peace feels like medicine when you are sick. 
Peace is doing something you love. Peace is me. Peace is you. Peace is growing love. Peace is making someone else feel better. So that's the Elmwood School students. A wonderful morning here. I'd like to thank our features again. We have Rick Byers, Bonnie Bishop, and Cooper and Keneally. One more hand for them, please. Lavender, jasmine, rosemary, 